this video, we will build stock market data pipeline using Google Cloud Platform and understand the important services you need to know as a data engineer. When you look at this Gartner quadrant that ranks different cloud providers, GCP or Google Cloud Platform comes under the top three cloud platforms. I've spent my last four years working on Google Cloud and worked on many different projects. Most of the videos I've seen online around this topic just list different services and tell you to learn them. But this is not the right way to understand all of these things. Instead of doing that, we will take one reference architecture diagram and I will show you how these services come together and make you understand how real world projects are built. When you decide to learn any cloud platform, there are hundreds of services available. The thing is, you don't need to learn all of them. You just need to focus on the important data services that required for data engineering and then there are some few services that are required for your foundational knowledge. So to understand all of these core data engineering services available on GCP, we will take this reference architecture diagram and try to understand the important services you need to know as a GCP data engineer. So without wasting time, let's get started. Let's assume that we have a client who want to build a stock market data pipeline. Here are the requirements. We should process stock data in real time. We also have data coming from the news and other sources that we can pass on machine learning model for better insight. Data volume is huge. We need something that can be easily scalable. We have a team of data analysts and data scientists who will be using SQL for basic data analytics. Integration of machine learning model and dashboard. So as we understand, we have two types of data. One is the real-time data that is the actual stock data coming in the real-time basis. And second is we have the batch data coming from the news and all of the other sources. So we need to build a mechanism to process both of these data and pass it forward. So the first step here we need to tackle is ingestion of all of these data. So first we will focus on the real-time ingestion and then we will focus on how to ingest the batch data. Now to handle the real-time data ingestion and processing, we have two services available on GCP. One is PubSub and second is Dataflow. PubSub is a messaging service that enables asynchronous communication, which means other system does not wait for the message. Let me explain you what asynchronous communication means. Imagine you have two friends, Alice and Bob, who want to exchange messages. In synchronous communication, Alice would send a message to Bob and wait for his response before proceeding without any other task. Similarly, Bob will also wait for the Alice response before continuing his own work. This type of communication is like having the phone conversation. Both of the parties need to be actively engaged together. But in asynchronous communication, Alice sends a message to Bob and then continue with her own task without waiting for immediate response. It is like sending an email. When you send an email, you don't wait for other persons to respond. You send an email and you continue with your work and response will come whenever it is possible. This is what the asynchronous or asynchronous communication means. So PubSub enables the asynchronous communication between different services and components. It works on a publisher and subscriber model. Publisher will send the message to the topic and subscriber can consume that message and pass it for the processing. So in our case, we will have data coming from the stock market API. Then they will publish the message in the PubSub topic. On the other hand, we will have the subscriber who can consume this information. This is just about the passing data from one system to another system in real time manner. Now we need to process this data. To process the data, we have one more service available on GCP that is called as a data flow. Data flow allows you to develop and execute data processing pipeline at scale. It is designed to handle both real-time data and batch data and it uses the framework called as the Apache Beam. So you can easily write your code in Python to create your pipeline and process your data. Using PubSub and Dataflow, we can easily ingest our real-time data and process it and pass it forward. So this was just about the handling the real-time data. Now we also need to design the mechanism to handle our batch data that is coming from the news and all of the other sources. In this case, the data is coming into the interval patches. So we will first store our data onto one location and then design the pipeline to process that data forward. Now to store data, we have a service available on GCP called as the cloud storage. Now if you have experience working with any other cloud platform such as AWS that is similar to S3 or Azure that is similar to the blob storage. So Google Cloud Storage is an object storage where you can store any types of file you want and then process it forward. So we will store all of our raw data onto the Google Cloud Storage bucket and then we will pass it forward for data processing using a service called as a data proc. Data proc is a fully managed service provided by Google. It allows you to run Apache Spark and Apache Hadoop jobs on large scale. So as per our client requirement, we wanted to process our data on large scale because our data volume is quite huge. 
data proc will help you with this we will use apache spark provided by data proc that is fully managed service so you don't have to worry about the installation or any other things everything will be taken care by google itself you just need to focus on writing your code and making sure your logic is correct once you transform your data then you can store your data onto some another location it can be google cloud storage so if you want to store your transformed data onto the bucket again you can do that or you can load your data onto the data warehouse in this case we will load our data onto the bigquery that is the fully managed service provided by google i have spent my last four years working onto the google bigquery and it is my one of the favorite data warehouse the reason is simple it is serverless so you don't have to worry about scaling your server it will scale automatically when your query requires a large processing power and it will scale down automatically second thing is it supports many different sql function that is not available in many different data warehouses and the third it supports both real-time and batch data ingestion most of the data warehouses available in the market the traditional one only supports the batch ingestion but bigquery is designed to support both so in our architecture diagram we will ingest the data from data proc that is our spark job and data flow our real-time data into the bigquery then we can give bigquery table access to all of the different users such as data analyst data scientist machine learning engineer so that they can build models dashboard on top of this that can help business to take right decisions let's say if you want to create the dashboard on our data then we can easily connect to bigquery that supports the multiple data sources and then we can use the looker studio that is the bi tool provided by google to visualize our data and build the dashboard and then we had some other requirements from our clients such as building machine learning models and giving access to data scientists you can use the vertex data lab that is a service provided by google it is the jupyter notebook environment so a data scientist can come here write their code build the forecasting model and deploy their machine learning model on scale so as you can see we completed the all of the requirement provided by our client we have the data ingestion ready for both real-time data and batch data we have transformation in place for high volume data using spark we have a big query for data analytics looker for dashboard data lab for machine learning models these were the core gcp data services you need to focus on as a data engineer and then there are some other foundational services that are also important to know such as learning about the cloud sql is a relational data management service supports various data systems such as postgresql and mysql data store and big table both are no sql databases used for various applications depending on the requirement then we have the cloud composer if you want to run apache airflow on cloud without worrying about the installation or scaling you can use the cloud composer which is the managed service provided by google so you just focus on creating and writing your code and everything will be managed by google itself then we have the cloud function event based compute service similar to aws lambda so if you want to run some code based on some trigger then you can use this like this there are some other important services such as compute instance vpc virtual private cloud IAM, Stack Driver, and many more. So these are some of the core fundamental services that will help you to become a better engineer. Now the question is how to learn and where to learn all of these things. So one thing is you can directly go to the Google documentation and start reading about all of these services. But if you want the course recommendation, then you can check this course available onto the Coursera. I have done this course by myself and this is one of the best course available on GCP data engineering. After doing this course and doing the hands-on practice, you can go and appear for this exam gcp data engineering professional that will help you to build your resume and validate your knowledge this was all from me if you want to learn data engineering from me then you can check my courses in the description you will find a lot of different foundational courses such as python and sql so you can go and check them out and as always don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new here thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video